This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue with part two of our conversation with California Democratic Congress member Nanette Barragan, who earlier this week went down to the U.S.-Mexico border advocating on behalf of Maria Meza. She's the 39-year-old Honduran mother who made international headlines after being photographed last month fleeing tear gas fired by border guards. Maria Meza and her children are now in the U.S., and their asylum application is being processed, but only due to the efforts of Congress members Barragan and Jimmy Gomez, who camped with her um, and her family and other migrants on the U.S. side of the border near Oteme, a port of entry between Tijuana and San Diego. Uh, Congress member Nanette Barragan, thanks so much for staying with us for part two of this conversation. I wanted to clarify one thing. This photograph mm -hmm. that has gone viral of uh, Maria with her two girls, um, are these two little girls twins? They are. Uh, they're so adorable. When we sat there waiting for hours on end, we started singing songs together. And uh, just so your viewers know, she has five children. Those are just two of her children. Mm. And they are four, five years old? They're four years old. Absolutely, yeah. And did Maria describe to you that moment of the tear gassing, what was happening and what she did? Well, I did have a chance to meet with her before we went down to the border. Um, didn't want to ask her too much. You could tell there was still, uh, you know, trauma and fear, and she was about to go back to the border, not really knowing what will happen. Uh, so we didn't talk too much about it. She certainly uh, looked uh, a little timid, a little concerned, uh, but we, uh, you know, her lawyers were with her, and everybody reassured her. Um, that we were going to be with her, that she wouldn't be alone. And uh, it was great to be able to walk with her to uh, present herself uh, for I, asylum. I'd like to go to Maria Mesa herself describing what happened. Well, I felt sad, scared and wanting to cry. That's when I grabbed my daughters and started running. At that moment, I thought I was going to die with them because of the gas. We ran and we fell into the mud and struggled to get up amidst the gas. A young man gave me his hand and pulled me up to my feet. I wasn't expecting it. We never thought they were going to fire these bombs where there were children, because there were lots of children, not just mine. There were more children with mothers there. They also started running, too, just like me. That's Maria Mesa, 39 years old. She has five kids. She was holding her uh, two—you uh, said five or four? They're four years four old. Four-year-old girls, as she was being tear-gassed. Um, now, on the one hand, she was—I uh, mean, the attention was enormous, the sympathy enormous. But you've pointed out there's also a right-wing campaign that made her very, very afraid, made her a target as she remained in Mexico. And as you pointed out just this week, two teenage boys were murdered as they awaited coming into the United States. Absolutely. Uh, when I went to visit with her, I was told by her attorneys that she was being followed by right-wing uh, folks who were targeting her. They had to put her in disguise. They had to move her, which is why it was so important that you had two members of Congress go down to observe what was about to happen at the port of entry. We had been hearing reports that people were being turned away at the ports of entry. And I can tell you, Amy, as a member of the Committee on Homeland Security, we're told all the time. Uh, that people are encouraged to go to the ports of entry, not to go uh, in between the ports. And if they did that, they could present themselves for asylum. That's not what was happening. Uh, even worse was we saw the intimidation factors that were being used uh, to discourage people from presenting themselves. Uh, everything from officers coming out in riot gear. Um, people, uh, Maria, at one point, was told to go to a different port of entry. One of the officers told her in Spanish, if she just went down to San Isidro, they would take care of her there. <laughs> um, but they had Mexican officials waiting for her to step off of U.S. soil. So it was a good thing, because her lawyers immediately said, no, you're staying right here, you're on U.S. soil. And uh, basically, they made us wait nine hours in her case. In another family's case, they made them wait 12 hours um, in the cold with their three-year-old, uh, really no regard uh, for for them, and it was just—it um, was pretty incredible. You you uh, stayed with them overnight. Yeah, I stayed there till about three o'clock in the morning. Uh, my colleague stayed until about six a.m. And uh, 
you know, it was it was freezing cold. At some point, they brought out these uh, steel fences to put up around us. And so we uh, we were really limited to space. We had nowhere to go to the bathroom. It was uh, the conditions were were pretty dire. And the and the border guards saying to you, you're a, you're a U.S. Congress member, um, mm -hmm. saying to you, it's capacity. We're full. We can't hold her. You demanded to see to be able to be brought in to see that they were at capacity. They just disappeared. They wouldn't let you. Yeah, uh, he would not let me come in at all. He wouldn't let either one of the members go in. And we just wanted to see the capacity issue that he kept saying was the problem. At one point, he said he would talk with the supervisor. He left, um, never came back. And we kept asking, do we have an update? Is there anything going on? It was clear that they were just ignoring us and our request and going to let us sit there and hoping that we were going to go away. As a matter of fact, when I did, at 3 a.m., walk across the border through that port of entry, one of the CBP agents, as I was leaving, said, oh, good, we got rid of one of them, referring to one of the members of Congress. And the, just the arrogance and the attitude mm. was pretty remarkable. So the fact that um, the Trump administration is now saying they could send people back over the border, even as they're waiting for their appeal, their asylum, uh, does that mean Maria could be sent back over? Well, she was she was presented on Monday, well, Monday night at around 9 p.m. Uh, this was just announced, so I have to think that there uh, that does not going to apply to her. But let me tell you, her lawyers are out in full force. Um, not only that, Congress is going to be pushing back on this. I know um, members from our side will be pushing back on this. Uh, there's a lot of immigrant right groups that we've been talking to who have expressed concern, not just about the dangers, but about the possible uh, violation of, of U.S. law. And having the Mexican government responsible for those that are in our um, immigration system raises a lot of legal issues and concerns. This is not the way the U.S. law uh, was set up to be. And I think there's a lot of questions on really whether the president can do this. I don't believe that he can. Hmm. Now, I want to go to the bigger issue of today, what's happening, the possible government shutdown. Very ironically, you have President Trump first having a fight with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, a public fight in the White House, saying he's proud to own the shutdown if it happens. It could mean something like 800,000 um, federal workers will not be paid, including border guards, um, will be working without pay through Christmas. Um, and he's all—he's saying this to hold the country hostage to his border wall, which he said would be paid by Mexico. But if you can talk about this and what it means, and now he's saying it's not a wall, it's metal slats. Yeah, you know, this is the president's ongoing agenda against immigrants and for his campaign promise for a wall. It's really ineffective and in, in, uh, not a good use of taxpayer dollars. As a member of the committee, I can tell you we have had witnesses come. People have said this is more of a speed bump. It's not going to solve the problem. Um, it's unfortunate the president uh, is proud to have a shutdown. As you mentioned, there's so many people at stake, people who live paycheck to paycheck that cannot afford to go without a paycheck and to do it right before the holidays. Uh, really, uh, just a, a couple of days before the holidays, no regard, as he's getting ready to fly on his private jet uh, to take a vacation in Florida. Uh, we need to have Congress um, get together, pass something, which is what we thought we had. I'm really hoping that uh, my colleagues on the other side can talk some sense into this president to avert this shutdown. We're hearing that uh, this afternoon the Senate will take up the House measure that includes the five billion dollars for a wall. Um, and what we're hearing is it's not going to it's not going to pass. So we're at an impasse. Uh, it's unfortunate this president uh, wants a shutdown, is going to have a shutdown at people's expense uh, while he's out vacationing. We're going to continue to be here, to be at the table. There are options uh, that both sides have agreed to that will avert a shutdown. Uh, but this president seems pretty adamant in uh, either getting his way and throwing a temper tantrum. What are those options? Well, the options are uh, there's a there's a short term um, spending gap that will uh, buy us some time into February. Uh, there's a one year option, and so there are two different options to avert a shutdown. The Senate uh, passed their version. Everybody thought there was a deal on the table. Hmm. You know, it wasn't until uh, outlets like Fox, who were going after the president, does he change his mind? 
and come back and say, you know what, I'm not going to sign something. Senators were already leaving. Mm. Uh, that's how much we thought we had already well, an agreement. Well, Lynette Barragan, I know you have to go vote, so we're going to let you go. I know also we heard, the, of course, that President Trump had a conversation with Rush Limbaugh, who is cast castigating him, and Coulter. Um, so we'll see what happens. Lynette Barragan is Democratic Congress member from California, member of the House Committee on Homeland Security. Earlier this week, she went down to the border and facilitated with Congressmember Gomez, um, the passage of Maria Mesa and her family, the Honduran mom, photographed last month fleeing tear gas fired by U.S. border guards along the U.S.-Mexico border with her four-year-old twins. This is Democracy Now! To see part one of our conversation, go to democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.